to uh, calm down the, the sounds. So I'm going to do the little talky talk part now and get it done out of the way. And then we're going to jump in to do an improv. Thumbs up if that's okay. Is that okay with you? I got any thumbs up? I got some thumbs up right on. Okay, good. All right. And Barbara Hagen joined us. Thank you. I wonder if we're going to get the other Barb. Anyway, so this week, um, uh, so we did uh, What is Improv, Chapter 2, but seriously, folks, Chapter 3, Support and Trust, Chapter 4, Agreement, Chapter 5, Initiations and Game Moves. Um, I think, where were we? What were we on? Were we on, were we supposed to do 4 and 5, or did we already do 4? Anybody remember? What number are we supposed to be on? Or should I just do whatever I want? We should, we should be on 5? We should be on 5, yes? Okay, well, let's go to 5. That's Initiations and Game Moves. Thank you, guys. Uh, 57. So we're going to talk, again, if you don't know, we're in truth and comedy. Truth and comedy here. So 57, initiations and game, game moves. There's, I'm just going to go over some concepts just for review, and then, and then I'll open up the lines and we can talk about it. But uh, initiations and game moves, uh, the concept was giving gifts. Now, and I'm going to give my own commentary throughout, you know, peppered throughout. So giving gifts, that's like when you uh, – that's when you um, – give an idea or you endow we use the word endow sometimes right you endow someone with a characteristic or a character say uh, well dr smith you've endowed them with something that's considered giving a gift now the opposite of that is called pimping <laughs> that's what they call it i didn't make that term up what it basically means is is when you ask a lot of questions and it doesn't necessarily have to be with questions it's just that's one way that it happens but when you put the onus on somebody else, like, uh, oh, I don't really know what's going on in this scene. So Raymond, uh, what, what, are you, what, are you, what are you doing? So that's actually forcing Raymond now to go, what am I doing? Uh, uh, I got to think of some stuff now. It's better at improv to give them the gifts and say, Raymond, uh, you are, you know, Dr. Raymond <laughs> is performing surgery today. Now, in that case, I already gave him a character and a name and I told you what he's doing. So I just gave him a gift. I made it easier for him because he doesn't have to go, uh, well, uh, let's see here. You know, there's that hesitation that we get. He who gives information is a gift giver. He who asks questions is a thief. That's the quote from page 57. Now, that's kind of a harsh way of saying it, isn't it? Okay, so people are natural game gamer, uh, game players. You know, you everybody's played Monopoly or Trivial Pursuit and, or played baseball or soccer or something, right? You know, we naturally as kids will play games and we'll give. Uh, we'll give an idea. We'll just jump out and, and do it. But sometimes when, as adults, we've learned through some social conditioning not to do that and we close ourselves off. So you want to just be open to it. Um, I'm going to skip through some of this. It's really interesting dialogue. They have some great examples in there. Uh, the next section is on listening and responding. Listening and responding. So um, a part of that, and that's connected to avoiding preconceived notions. So listening and responding is essentially where you really try to listen to what the person says. So what's cool about these Zoom meetings is that we don't get to run around and get distracted. And so when you're doing a scene with somebody, all you got is their face and their sound. So it's much more, it's limited, but in another way, it gets you to go, what are they, what is, I'm going to keep picking on Raymond. What is Raymond really saying, Dr. Raymond? And when he says something, I got to really take the words in and I got to kind of think about it, process it. And then I get to add my own information. I get to yes and it. Uh, so there's a benefit to this. Now, preconceived notions is things like, uh, uh, avoiding, um, anything where you, uh, you think the, per you know, where the person's going and, uh, but you really don't. So that can happen sometimes. And by the way, if, um, uh, my, the, some people's internet, my internet's been a little bit funny. Uh, so if I, if I lag, you know, uh, usually the audio still come through. So if you, if you can't hear me at all, just, you know, unmute yourself and yell at me or thumbs down or I don't know. Well, thumbs down might just be, you don't like what I'm saying, but if you can do something else and say, you know, I can't hear you, let me know. All right. So, um, you know, there's initiations are verbal and nonverbal. So you can get an initiation from a facial expression, right? You can get an idea. The preconceived notion, though, um, would be like as if you were to go, okay, well, 
Raymond always plays these kind of characters. I'm going to assume that's what he's doing, even though he hasn't said anything yet. Now, you might not think you do that, but we all can kind of do that a little bit. We can, we can assume we're going to play the scene a certain way before I even got an initiation from Raymond. So that's another example of not really listening. So that's kind of what I'm talking about. What we're talking about when we say the, avoid the preconceived notion. Uh, don't lay the whole scene out in your mind before you do it. And that we, sometimes we do that. We, like, we, we lay it all out. You have to be open and flexible for change. Okay. Uh, there's freeze tag. We've all played that, you know, where you okay, freeze and you tag them out. That, that's a great example of a game, um, you know, for this. And we might, um, we might, what I might do is have a small group play freeze tag, like four at a time, because then, then we can hear each other. So we might, I think that's what we're going to do first on this. But before I do, let's get through the chapters, just a couple more pages. Three line scenes is another way to learn this. We know this, this is like UI, we, right? We know this. And then here's the key points for chapter five, and then we'll play some games, and then we'll do chapter six if there's time. So key points for chapter five, make assumptions, don't ask questions. Now that's different from preconceived notions, right? That the, the making assumptions is once you're in the scene, just go with it. Preconceived notions is, well, I think the scene should go this way, and I'm, I'm pre-designing it instead of staying in the moment. They're kind of, they're, they sound similar, but they're actually pretty, they're quite different. The next point is, is look for the game within your scene and play it. What, what we mean when we say game, now there's the game that we play, like the exercise of improv, like three line scene or freeze take. Those are improv games. That's not what I mean in this case. This is the game of the scene is an expression. And it means what's funny about the scene? What's the, what's the repeating pattern? What's the shtick? What is, the, uh, what is the undercurrent, the underlying theme? What is, oh, this is one of those scenes where the person um, keeps slipping on the banana over and over again, and by the third time, it's so ridiculous, it's over the top and we laugh, even though it wasn't even that funny in the first one. They, this is the, I always slip on the ba banana peel no matter where they place it. And they even put one on the toilet seat and I slip off the toilet. Like, like that's the game of the scene, right? Uh, another, it, it, any of the, if you like Lucille Ball, any of her old stuff, uh, her great comedy numbers. There was always there was always something about her character. Usually she played dumb or she played goofy, and there would be something about her character that she couldn't quite get it, or she would or she would you know she'd be struggling with something. The game of the scene was let's see how many ways she can screw it up, right? So that that that's the game of those scenes, and you're looking for it. We'll we've gone deep in this in the past, but just a quick reminder: if you remember the discussion about um, the first unusual thing and going, oh, that's different. That's kind of unusual. That, you know, the con everything up until now has just been kind of pedestrian, normal talk, but that was kind of stuck out in my mind as something odd. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play on that. I'm gonna keep poking that bear and see what happens and I'm gonna try to create a pattern. That would be using the first unusual thing to find a game in the scene, okay? Or to create one, okay? Some of you remember that. And if you don't, hopefully I didn't just totally confuse you. Uh, listen and remember was the third point. Listen and remember so that you can you can you can hearken back to something earlier in the conversation, or a previous character, or 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 whatever. Uh, here's another point. This is point number four. Listen for the whole idea in a statement. This is a tough one for me. So you might go, okay, I, the, the Raymond's talking about doing. He says I'm doing surgery on the patient in five minutes please bring the hammer. Okay, now I might have heard, uh, you know, okay, he's going to do, uh, in my brain, I'm like trying to hurry up and get in the scene. He's like, oh, he's going to do, he's going to do surgery in five minutes. All right, so I'm, I'm a nurse and I'm going to, um, you know, prepare. Um, and then I move into the scene and I didn't even hear him say, bring the hammer. Right? So whoops, you know, like listen for that whole, and that would just be missing a word. But what if, what if he had even more depth in it in that statement? You know, like what if he said it in a menacing way? And then I realized this is like a mad scientist doctor. And I and my first idea was it we were in a regular hospital, but the way he said it, it's like we're working on Frankenstein. So you really got to listen. I mean, we're saying it over and over again, right? I, we say it constantly. All the improv teachers, it's always the same. Listen, listen, listen. But there's depth of that. There's different levels of that. And, and this point is listen for the whole idea in that statement. Okay, the last one, number five, is avoid preconceived 
notions. We already talked a lot about that, just a quick reminder. So that's the five of chapter five. Okay, so I'm gonna unmute a few people at a time here, um, just because I think it's easier than having everybody at the same time. Sorry, I'm a, but we'll take turns. And we're gonna start out, we're gonna try this game. We're gonna try uh, a game of freeze. <laughs> And I know normally it's like physical, right? So we're not going to do the physical version. We're going to do the, the, the mental version. It's going to be kind of sort of like uh, um, it's, it's slackers, but without changing character. So let me describe it before we start. So two people are going to start a scene and we're going to get, you're going to get a suggestion and you're going to start your scene and you're talking, you're doing dialogue and two other people are just, they're not going to be muted, but they're going to be just waiting and they're going to say freeze. And if they interrupt the scene, then you stop and they're going to say who they want to replace. And hopefully, you know, we can figure this out pretty easy. You just say, hey, I'm going to replace Jesse. And you're going to come in and you're going to assume my same character. OK, but you're going to just take the dialogue or the storyline wherever you want to go. So this is kind of like a simple story freeze. Right. Instead of the physical position one, you're going to stay the character. And you're just going to try to take it in a different direction. Or you can harken back or remember something that was said earlier and then try to play on it. This is a tricky game, but I think it's really fun. So let's start with Paul and Raymond. And um, let's, let's do Blue. Are you guys okay with this? Are you willing to try it? Okay. Sure. And then I'm, I'm going to put in, um, I'm gonna put in Liz and, the Liz and Roy show. And I'll put in... Uh, I'll, I'll let Roy start if that's okay. Actually, no, Liz, do you want, can you do this one? Or do you want to watch one first? Sure, I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing, but I'll, I'll do it. Great, good for you, way to be brave. All right, so I've unmuted Paul, Raymond, Blue, Liz, and Roy. So, um, so we have Paul, Raymond, Blue, and Liz. Now I'm gonna have Blue and Raymond are gonna start the scene. And then Paul and Liz, you just watch for a little bit. And then what you're gonna do when you want to, you just say freeze. And then they're gonna stop. And then you're gonna tell us which person you wanna replace. And then you're gonna be that person, that character. So whatever, you know, if, if, if Raymond actually becomes Dr. Raymond, then, uh, and I'm Liz and I call freeze, I have to become Dr. Raymond, okay? So, so and then you are gonna continue the dialogue or keep the scene going. Um, any questions on that? Okay. Um, who has chat? Who is doing the chat on the side? Who can quickly give me a noun over in the chat, the chat bar or down at the bottom? Uh, dog is the first one. I, Indo. What's that? Pray. Shovel. I'm going to go with um, piano. I'm going to go with, uh, with the fir what, what first one that I could recognize, which is dog. Okay. Dog. So you guys are going to use dog as your suggestion for the scene. And I'm going to mute myself and shut up for a minute. Okay, you guys can start whenever you're ready. You always bring such fascinating dogs, Raymond, to the park. Well, Inspector Blue, I know how much you enjoy meeting new dogs. So I brought you a very unusual one today. Hmm. We should uh, explore this a little more. Do tell. As you can see, he has three ears and two eyes. However, his tail is three feet long. Oh my, you are so correct. Three ears, that must make him a wonderful hunter. Yes, it's amazing. It's amazing. He once hunted down a beaver at 30,000 feet. <laughs> Get incredible. out of here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, what a dog. What a dog. He's a great dog. I've been having troubles deciding what to name him, though. Ah. Yes, it must be something very, like, regal and royal. Yeah. Somehow all like three year doesn't do it to me. No, three years. Yeah, no. Yeah, long in the tail. Eh. Yeah. Not, not, not really the best. Freeze. Raymond, I'm going to take your place. Okay. Okay, do, I, do I freeze at the same time? 
Um, I'm going to jump in here. Liz, play. Liz, you don't have to. Ray, you don't have to. You can wait a little longer. I have a, it says I have an unstable internet connection momentarily, or somebody does. Sorry about that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Liz, I just said okay, that. Paul and I. Okay, yep. So, yes, Paul, yes. There you go. what names do you have for this fabulous dog? I'm going to name him Kokomo Dragon. Cool. You know, he's got that long tail and those teeth. Oh. They're ferocious. Kokomo Dragon. I like it. I like it a lot. Oh, I thought so. I thought you'd love that one. Yes. Oh. Freeze. I'm going to take your spot, Blue. So, so Paul, what do you and Kokomo Dragon like to do when you're not at the park? Well, we hunt rabbits mainly, um, but they're kind of fast. So we try for slower things like sloths, you know, things like that. But we do our best. But we can cut down bad guys if you want. Wow. That sounds kind of exciting. Yeah, it'd be fun. Paul, freeze. Oh. So, Inspector, what are you inspecting today anyway? You seem very curious about my lizard-like dog. Well, I just want to make sure that the animals are being well taken care of and that nothing's happening at the park that, that shouldn't be going on. I respect you for that. Why don't you ask the dog itself? We've made it clear that this is a very interesting, intelligent dog. So. Feel free to talk to the dog, lizard beast. <laughs> <laughs> Are you feeling okay with the way you're being treated? Hmm? You getting enough love and attention? Yeah, all right. I would watch your hands though. He is from Indonesia and has been good at defending himself and his owner. Okay, I'll be a little careful. He is getting a little tongue and tooth out there. <laughs> oh, he is kind of eyeing your left wrist there, I think Inspector. He, I think and I don't want to go to jail. Just <laughs> eight. He's belching. Yeah. Well, and I a belching dog. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Cool. Very All right. Good. <laughs> nice job, you guys. Nice job. Okay. So, uh, real quick, um, what what I uh, what I like about that scene? Oh, actually, uh, sorry, you guys. Um, I just want to say something real quick and then we're going to get some other people to get a turn. So what I like about it is that you were, you, you stick to the game, you did freeze, you kind of, you kept the theme, you didn't wander off, you, you know, you stuck with basically what we're talking about. What I want to try to challenge the next group with, let's take it to another level. Okay. So don't just talk about the dog, try to, try to make a strong caricature, caricature, not a caricature, a character, <laughs> try to make a strong character character choice and then that way the person who freezes you has to try to play that character so rather than just playing yourself you know what i mean like try to be you know do something that is that is very strong so that it's easy for the second person to copy it okay that's what i meant um and let's do this time let's try uh teresa and denise and um uh uh let's see here Nancy and Jason. That's four people there. You guys ready? Are we still on? We're still on. All yes. right. So let's have um, if it's if it's a, I'd like uh, Teresa and Denise to start, and then Nancy and Jason. When you can, you guys do the freeze. All right. Now we and I already got a whole bunch of suggestions. And we on. just assume the kick. Now. We just assume the ki the character of the character we freeze, right? Correct. That is correct. Uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna go with shovel. I'm gonna go with shovel here. So you guys can start. You, you shovel is your is your uh, suggestion for your theme. Okay, ready and begin. Teresa, you're always looking so busy shoveling uh, the garden. You're always taking weeds out of the garden. Are you, you have to leave some flowers in there. Were you going to do that? Richie, go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
there are some flowers in the garden, but you, you kind of got in there and, you know, I think you meant to get some weeds out, but you got the flowers out. I'll step in first. Oh, well, I was going, I was trying to leave the flowers in, but the weeds and the flowers look so similar. And then, and then the gophers, I found the gophers underneath the flowers and the weeds and I had to get them out too. It was just a big hectic mess. You know the difference between tulips and, you know, weeds. You know, these are flowers and the weeds are something that you, you take out. You don't take it all out. You Maybe, don't? You know, I would just appreciate if I thought you... the goal was to get rid of them. What? I thought the goal was to get rid of them all. Not everything. You got to leave the flowers in there. It's a garden. I mean, there's obvious Denise, things. Denise, you know, freeze. The idea is not to take out everything. You got to take, leave some of the beauty in the garden. Don't take so, out everything. It's so confusing because my job changes every, with every season. I can't keep up with this. Oh, now take a deep breath and slowly exhale. And I'm, I'm it, hyperventilating. I can't do this. <laughs> No, I said slowly, not too fast. And oh, just look oh, at the slowly. landscape. Okay. Oh, you know the difference between oh. weed and flower. Flowers, what you now need to go with, Now take a look right? and see how beautiful it is. Well, yeah, the sun is out. It is quite beautiful. Oh, and it's gone away again. Well, so don't don't just you know, willy nilly, pull everything out. You gotta. Yeah, but every but every time we, we talk, you always tell me that I need to pull more of them out. You don't like them. So That's, what am I that supposed would, to do? That would be the weed, Jason. You're you're smarter than that. What about the gophers? Well, those you can kind of. Bonk, you over want, the head. Do you leave like. the gophers in I'm confused. Do I leave the gophers in two or do I take them out? Take them out. Okay. Take out those gophers big time. Shotgun? That would work. And or you got weeds too? And it would be humane because they go quickly. Yes, they would. It would or we fun. could stick a little bit of dynamite in the tunnel there. But Ooh. you know, that might that might uproot the beautiful flowers. Stick a hose in there and you could flood them out. Do we really need the flower? I mean, we keep coming back to this. Do we really need the flowers? Yes, we do. All right, and scene. Good job, you guys. That was fun. Um, so uh good. That was good. I like how you tried to keep the character also. That was great. And and I saw I see claps from Jack. Thank you, Jack, for the claps. <laughs> Figure out how to do that little the little uh, reactions. You can clap or thumbs up. That's pretty fun. Okay, um, I think what we'll do now, let's do that again. Let's see, uh, we have, uh, let's see, I got, um, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention was you can freeze, a, you don't have to just freeze one time and then that's it. If you've been frozen and you get out, you can freeze and come back in, right? So you could do it a couple times here. Um, all right, so who hasn't gone? We haven't had Barbara. Um, we haven't had um, uh, Jack and Bill, and I think and I think everybody. Bill, I'm going to unmute both of. Are you on the phone for your audio? No. Okay, you, you're you're here twice. So do you have like another connection going? Well, yeah, I I lost my keyboard on my desktop, and I can't turn anything off there. So if you oh, can get it. rid of me, if you can get rid of me, go for it. Can you talk talk a little bit more. I want to make sure I get rid of the right one. You should be getting rid of the one that has the uh, the picture on it, or not the one that has the picture. I'll on do it. that. The blank one. Get rid the of the one. blank one, the one that only has my name. All right, cool. Hold on one sec. I'm gonna get rid of him. This is fun. I I, I wonder. I've never removed anybody. I'm gonna Go remove him. It. Boom! He's it. out of here. <laughs> I am. One, two, three, out of here. That was and actually now I don't really hear fun. Me. Well, now I don't hear me twice either, so that's good. I've got to reboot that machine, I think. Okay, lost so my keyboard, lost everything. Sorry, Bill. Uh, so you're up. 
uh, Jack is up, Barbara's up, and then um, let's have, uh, you know, Roy, you didn't really get much of a turn, you know, because you were, you, but you did kind of come in, so I'll give you a turn on this one, okay? Okay. All right, so um, I think that's, that's it, right? You guys ready to go? And then I got to go out of here to check my little, uh, we had, uh, you guys did shovel, right? The last <clears throat> week, so let's do garden, and I, I know some of you guys are gardening, so let's do garden. That sound good? All right, give it a shot. Go ahead and oh, who wants to start? I'll uh, let's say um, Jack and Barbara can start, and Bill and Roy, you guys freeze whenever you are ready. I, I, Jack, I've been doing some good gardening out there, trying to grow some really impressive plants, if you know what I mean. You always make such great gardens, Barbara. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I do try, and these that have been growing up are beyond expectation. In fact, they're so big now, I think I can almost harvest them. We need to harvest these and create a business for you during this COVID-19 pandemic. Freeze, yes. Jack. Freeze, Jack. I've decided that part of our business, part of our business, I brought a big guard, a big guard donkey to protect everything from the deer, because we know the deer are going to come in. And our guard donkey has been well, well trained to those, stop anything coming in yes, anywhere. Those guard donkeys really do their job. And also the guard donkeys will help against those rabbits that keep trying to eat the crop. And we don't want that, you know how that is. But, that is, you know, that the is guard so, donkeys, do they fertilize as well? I think they do. They do, they do. They're very eco-friendly. So we get a twofer, a big twofer. We get a lot of twofer. We get well, more that, twofer than we can have. We might sell some. That's a twofer. That's what the whole point is, is to make some money during this time to help alleviate the pain. You know what those plants do to you when you eat them. Have you seen that? I, I have. And you know that our donkey's twofer will also keep social distancing going so that when we <laughs> hand out the plants, we can stay away. Well, that's Please, Bob. Freeze. So I always admire how creative you are, Bill. What wonderful ideas! But I must say, I kind of like deer. I'm not too fond of donkeys. Well, that's okay. The donkeys don't hurt the deer. They just poop them away. <laughs> poop them away, you say? <laughs> that's true. If the poop doesn't work, they just fart a lot. <laughs> When I said you were creative, I was really underestimating your creativity. This is absolutely astounding. I can see big bucks in this. In fact, I just realized that not only do we have the poop fertilizer, we have methane. <laughs> what don't you have? Uh, venison. We don't, we don't have venison <laughs> because they only keep the deer away. <laughs> I don't know what to say, but this is like a zoo farm. Well, per perhaps, perhaps if we light the, the methane, we can actually roast the venison right at the same time. <laughs> I hear roasted venison keeps COVID-19 away. It probably does, burns the virus, nothing can survive. We're on it, baby. We're, we're worldwide. <laughs> Freeze, save Roy. the world, like, like save the earth, man. Freeze, Roy. I'm going to call the WHO right now, Bill, and get on this. <laughs> Who's on first? Yes. <laughs> Who's on first will be the name of the person we put on the path to, to solve this. This what is going to be a great do? business. What will we do second, Jack? Well, that'll be the second person we have on, on it. This is the best idea to fight the coronavirus. Well, well, then, who's on Bill. third? Okay, you know what? I think that is some good thinking, Jack, to freeze, to get the WHO and get them alerted to the potential that we have with this new weed being fertilized. It's, un it's uncanny what's going to happen to the world. I agree, Barbara. And I, those radishes that you make in the gardens you make, we also need your food, our family, during this crisis. So we'll be taking all of your food. 
Yes, I will donate the food and give it to the people that need it. Very good, good. idea, indeed. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, well, that's a I good scene. I think that's okay. a good scene, you guys. <laughs> nice job. Awesome. That was pretty fun. Uh, everybody got a chance to do it, right? Okay. Yep. So what I want to do for you guys uh, on this one, I want you to try... We're going to try um, three line scenes. Okay. We, you kind of already did them, but I want us to do rapid fire three line scenes just for repetition. And um, the way we're going to do it is I'm just going to quickly mute and unmute, you know, different people really fast. Um, and we'll start out with, um, you know, Paul and Raymond. I'm just going to work down my list that I see here. And it's you, I, we, and let, let's review this really quick. You always, you never. I need or I want, and then we. So you, you can say you always, or you can say you never, and that encourages you to add some emotion and more connection with the other person. And then the I person is gonna respond with I need or I want. And that's your response is much stronger when you have need or want in there, okay? And then the we is whatever you want to do, we blank, fill in the blank. So you, you always, you never, I need, I want, and we, okay? And if you wanna, um, I'm gonna give a, a suggestion just to start, but then uh, after that, I'm, here's another layer. I'm just adding a little layer here. The layer is that I'm gonna give you the first group of suggestion, and then after that, I want you to, everyone else who's listening, if it's your turn next, I want you to come up with your idea based on something that they did. It doesn't mean, let me tell you what, it, it doesn't mean that you have to continue their scene. And it doesn't mean that you have to be their character or anything like that. It just means that you're going to let it, you're going to let it inform you like, oh, I got an idea because it's something they just did. And so it, this is a fun group game in that way too, because now we're actually going to build on each other rather than just random stuff. So instead of random, we're going to start with a suggestion and we're going to kind of try to build on a theme maybe or it might seem a little random, but it, it has to make sense to you in your mind. So something that you pulled out of the previous scene that you can do for your next scene, okay? And if you wanna build on it and, or, you know, uh, if you wanna have a, if, if, if they talk about somebody who's not in the room and then you become that person in the next scene, that's fine, but you don't have to do anything complicated here. Just try to find your own suggestion from it. So Paul and Raymond are gonna start uh, you guys are unmuted, and uh, your suggestion is going to come from the side. And we didn't, we had a piano. So, piano is your suggestion. Okay. And then I'll, uh, after that, just so you know the order, Blue and uh, I'll have Blue and Roy, and then I'll have Liz and Teresa, and then I'll have Denise and Nancy and Jason and Barbara and Jack and Bill. Okay. But you'll all call that out when we get closer, just so you, you know, you hear it. Okay. You guys have piano, Paul and Raymond. Um, and Paul, you do the U, Raymond's the I. Okay, go ahead, begin. You always play that death march. Why do you constantly do that? That one thing, it's driving me crazy. I need to feel the march within my soul constantly. We gotta do something with your soul because you're Piano driving your piano playing is driving me nuts. Awesome. Okay. Cool. So uh, <laughs> I loved it. So now we have Blue and 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 Roy. Uh, you guys are ready to go, and you guys are just gonna again now pick something out of what you heard for your suggestion. Blue, you're gonna be the you. You always bring those great marching feet with you, Roy. Everywhere you go, I need to have a remembrance of those old days that were so beautiful compared to today's boring life of mine. Right, yes, we should get together and do lift, 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 right, lift, practice our marching. I appreciate your enthusiasm to join me. Thanks, Blue. <laughs> awesome, okay, Liz and Teresa, you're up, Liz and Teresa. Liz, you're gonna start with you. Teresa, you got the eye. You always look so relaxed on these calls, Teresa. Do you have some type of training in the military? Can't hear her. Yeah, uh-oh, Teresa, we can't hear Thank you. Thank God it is that, Teresa. 
Give her a sec. Is that better? Yeah, we can yes. hear you now. Yep, we can hear you. Okay, there's something wrong with my earplugs. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Liz, can you give her give her hand, Liz? Do maybe do that again. Okay. So you always look so relaxed on these calls, Teresa. Do you have some type of a, a prior background training in the military? I don't. I actually have a different secret, but I don't want to share that here. <laughs> we really should maybe go and talk someplace private then. <laughs> oh yeah, you might enjoy what my secret is. <laughs> <laughs> we all would. <laughs> I love that scene. That was really funny. Um, okay, so now we're going to have uh, Denise and Nancy. You guys are up. Um, uh, Denise, you're going to be the you. Nancy's the I. You always seem so pleasant after a beautiful day. Well, I like to get out and breathe the fresh air. That marching helps a lot. You know, it gives you some good exercise to do. We should go down to that march place and uh, hear some music. We should. I am all up for that. Yep, we can really get our groove on. Cool. I like how, Nancy, you were already, uh, you were already marching. <laughs> Jason and Barbara, you guys are up next and just base it on what you heard. Uh, Jason, you can start with the U. You shouldn't be going outside that much. You're gonna get yourself sick with coronavirus. I need to feel the fresh air before I go inside anymore. You, you're driving me crazy. I can't stand being inside anymore. I just need the fresh air. Oh, we can't keep doing this. You can't keep putting the family at risk. This is unacceptable. <laughs> what a terrible character. I love you, Jason. <laughs> okay, oh, Jack and Bill, you guys are up next. Go ahead, Jack. You're going to do the you. You always find a way to keep us safe, Dad, during these hard times. I, 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 I do, son, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do that a lot. And, you know, I'm really going for this new, uh, this new Groove March diet because I've heard that the new Groove March diet really, really protects everything. We need to market the Groove, the, the groove diet and your stuttering habit to teach kids with stuttering problems how they could survive this. I, 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 yeah, I do, I think, I do, yeah, yep, I do. Yay. Yep. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, guys. Awesome. All right. So let's, uh, um, we, I think that was pretty good, pretty successful. You got a clap. You got a Liz and Roy put a clap in there. Good job. All right. So, uh, next I'm going to do, uh, before we move on to something else, since that was kind of a warm up, and I, I'd like to do a bigger scene. I'm going to unmute six people at a time. Ooh. Okay. And what I want you to do now, we, we don't have to say freeze in, a, a, on this one. But I, I want you to do UI we. We're going to start. Here's the rules. You got to start with UI we to begin your scene. Okay. And then when a new character is, is introduced, uh, and, you're, and you're not going to freeze and replace anybody. So if you start talking, what you're going to just because it's Zoom here, so like it's going to be a little awkward compared to real life. But you know, like right now, if, I'm, if I do the speaker view, when I start talking, I take over the screen, right? So what's going to happen is, is when you guys start talking, you're going to take over the screen and, and Zoom is designed, you know, the technology, it'll go back and forth. It'll switch cameras based on who is doing the, making the most noise. <laughs> and so what you're going to do is we're going to, we're going to learn a lot about the theater this way, because whoever's talking is going to steal the spotlight for a moment. So when you introduce yourself into the scene, you want to make sure that you are clearly talking to the other people that were already in the scene or make it clear that you're not. So let, let me give you an example. Like let's say in the last scene, you know, um, uh, Jack and Bill are having that discussion. If I were to come in and say, Bill, blah, 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 blah. Okay, then obviously I entered the scene with Jack and Bill, okay? But if I entered the scene and I said, and remember Jack and Bill were in the scene, but if I enter the scene and say, Jason, you know, we've got to do something about these TPS reports. 
then you can tell I just called Jason into the scene with me and Jack and Bill can kind of go to, um, uh, you know, you want, you could kind of go to the background of it. Okay. And I got a good question, Barbara Hagen. Uh, I want to, uh, she said, you want us to not be on gallery view then, you know, you, you know how you guys have an option um, on the upper right. Usually there's a gallery view. There's the six little, um, it looks like a Rubik's cube, those six little, you know, or a keypad, little squares, and you can click gallery view and you just see all the people on one screen. And if you click speaker view, you see the person who's talking right now. What I would encourage you to try to do is, you can go back and forth if you want, no problem. And I don't know what it's like on a phone. That might be a pain in the butt, I don't know. On a computer, it's pretty quick and easy. But um, you, you, you could try both, but try speaker view so that you really see the person who's talking. Like if you put me on speaker view and you see me fill up your screen, like you see my facial expressions and all that, but if you like were to click onto the little, you know, little uh, other view, then I'm just like one of the little box in the Brady Bunch. Right, so you got to kind of use that to your advantage, um, which is sometimes you want to see all of the people so you can see what's going on, uh, but you might want to you might want to explore looking at one at a time. So uh, do whatever you want, Barbara. That's the long way of saying that. <laughs> okay, um, all right. So we're gonna have six people. Two people are gonna start it. You're gonna do UI we to start the scene. If somebody enters the scene, make it really clear that you're either entering it with those two people. Or you're, or you're not. Now, to make it even easier today, just use everybody's real name, okay? And I tried to, I, I tried to name everybody the best I could. I think I got mostly, at least the first name in there. So you can see their name on there really quick and you don't have to think. So I could say Raymond, and then you know I'm talking to Raymond, right? Don't make up names just for now, just to keep it really simple. Okay, any questions or can we, can we move on? Okay. Who's the on. six? Say again? Who is the six people? to start that was the next thing you gave me a great segue okay no questions then so yeah i do yes what do you mean? i mean you have six people you start with you why we but is there a point or is there a, a just a scene that we're making or are we supposed to have a reason for the scene no we're just playing an open scene but you have to start with UI we okay. and we're gonna we're gonna see how well people can come in okay okay so we're kind of practicing coming into a scene and you don't have to come in. If you feel like it's going really well and you don't want to come in, you don't have to. You should feel inspired to come in. If you don't feel inspired, don't force it to happen. Um, but usually there's something that will trigger you to come in, right? Now, what you could do to be really generous and give gifts, I want to encourage the first two people, if you're starting a scene, give some gifts. And the way to give the gift is endow something or say, I, you know, I really wish we could find a police officer around these parts. Okay, what did you just do there? You gave somebody an opening to come in and be a cop, right? So you don't have to do that, but I'm giving you ideas. I'm giving you tools, you know, like how do you incorporate your team? How, you know, you don't need to incorporate them. You could just have two people just having a dialogue the whole time. And maybe that's the point is that you don't want anybody else, but then they come in and you don't want them to. So I'm not making that a rule. I'm just giving you some more tools. So let's start with Paul and Raymond and uh, let's do Liz and Teresa and Denise. That's one, two, three, four, five. And then I think I lost blue. Ho hopefully she can come back on. Uh, and then uh, let's see, uh, I'll put in, uh, I'll put in Nancy. Okay. So we got, again, it's Paul, Raymond, Liz, Teresa, Denise, and Nancy. And Roy, do your best to try to stay out of this scene because I'm going to put you in the next one, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Cool, cool. Any, uh, you guys ready to go? Okay, so. Yes. Um, Who's first? Uh, hold on a sec. Uh, Jack, good question. You look, you seem. You know what? You could do you look, you seem on this one if you want. Um, let's, let's try that one. You look, you seem. Instead of you always, you never, let's switch to you look and you seem. That way we'll, we'll do Jack's suggestion and this game at the same time. How, how do you like them apples? We've got both of them going on. So you look, you seem. Uh, Paul, you're going to you look, you seem to Raymond, and then the scene will begin. And the suggestion is, uh, let's see, we did, um, the suggestion is pray. Pray. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pray. P-R-A-Y. Pray. Okay, and everybody else, enjoy the show. You, you look like you really need to pray on the, for this. I mean, it's bad. Yeah, I, uh, 
I seem to have a need for that. I need to prey upon something. May as well be this. <laughs> well, yes, um, that, that's a good idea. Uh, don't prey on me. <laughs> yeah, we should. No, be, we I would never prey on you, you Paul. <laughs> Thank you. I feel very reassured by that. Um, are you home alone? Hmm? Are, you look like you're home alone. I, yeah, I am alone. Oh, okay. But I've got a Doberman that I can let loose any time. Just for your information, nothing <laughs> about it. You know, I just thought I'd that. Is he a large Doberman? Yes, he is. And I haven't fed him all today, so he's kind of hungry. Uh, just, mm. just, I just thought I'd mention those things. Though. You, know, you know, just making conversation. Hey, Paul, did you feed the Doberman that big chunk of raw meat yet? No, not yet. And he's really, he's salivating now. I can see it over there in the corner. Yeah, he looks like he's pretty hungry and could be dangerous if not fed. That's true. But he, um, you know, he's very obedient. I say stay. Stay! He, he'll, he'll stay. Uh, it may take <laughs> times, but, you know, he'll stay. <laughs> well, we wouldn't want any stalkers coming around here or taking advantage of you, Paul. Not with him around. That's true. That's why he's around, you know. That's why you call him Razor, right? Because he'll be sharp as a tack. Yeah. Actually, one of the reasons I don't feed him very often, it's kind of nice if a stalker comes around. They can save a lot of money that way. Oh, yeah. You wouldn't have to eat. There's his meal on the, on the run. That's right. And literally on the run. That's right. It's takeout. That's right. Yep. Take out, which is really all the rage right now with this coronavirus thing here. Hey, Liz, what's that behind you? Oh, oh, it's uh, it's my uh, my Rattweiler. Are you sure? Yeah. yeah. Are you sure you don't need to start to pray? <laughs> well, I, well, well, maybe so. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Oh my gosh. What do you see? <laughs> oh my gosh. There's somebody coming in my house. I don't know who it is. I think I better go get my neighbor, Paul, and have him come over with his dog. You know, he doesn't feed it very often. I might be able to help over here. So I'm, I'll be back. Yeah, because I heard there is a stalker in the neighborhood. And so be very wary. Liz. Nobody told me his initials were, well, that his name started with an R. <clears throat> Liz, did you call for me? Paul, are you in there? Can you come help me yeah. with the dog? Yeah, I've got my dog here. It's friends with your dog. Yeah, can you come over and bring your hungry dog over to my house? I think there's somebody who's broken into my house. Oh, he'll love that. Great. <laughs> ah, I'll be right over. <laughs> oh, Paul, does that Doverman like sirloin? Uh, I thought of bringing the Doverman a treat. Huh. Well, um, he likes it live. He likes his meat live. You know, wow. he's instinctively a hunter. Does but he like? You can bring a. You can bring that uh, sirloin over. I'll you. Yes. I'll you if he doesn't. Okay. I'll bring you sirloin. I. Uh, he looks like he might be a possum chaser. I could bring a possum to chase. Oh yeah. There's not much sport to a possum. They're pretty slow. Oh. But 
but you, you can... are home now. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm just here all alone. I can't do anything. Uh, I'm helpless. Mm. Mm. I see. And you don't live anywhere near Liz, I understand. Uh, well, no, not really near Liz. Because um, <laughs> okay. she's got a mean dog and, you know, yes. mine's so friendly. He'll but love to. You and your Doberman just stay home. It'll be fine. <laughs> oh, well, if you think it's bad. <laughs> Ring, ring, ring. Oh, Liz, Liz. Oh, hey, Nancy. Someone might be coming over that could be dangerous. How do you Hi, know? I'm your neighborhood stalker. Yeah, that neighborhood stalker, I think he's coming your way. Yeah, I was just wondering if there's a dog here that needed uh, any uh, treats oh. or, um, you know, anything that, um, you know, needs any meat or anything that you, like, want to give it or anything. I like dogs. I like Chasing dogs. Oh, Denise. <laughs> How goes it? It's going great, thanks. I just thought I'd come over to all of your houses and rob you while you were on your telenets. <laughs> well, that will be fine with me because you probably wouldn't get a whole lot here. And I don't know, it's a pretty nice looking kitchen you got back there. Oh, well. Yeah, at least it's indoors. Um, I tell so you right. what, we can go in together and we'll split the loot. Excellent. I'll take it. Okay. So Denise, you can I'm going to end the scene. I'm going to end the scene. <laughs> um, good job. Now, I'm going to unmute everybody here, or you can type in the chat if you want. But what I want, what I want to hear is let's relate this to the lessons. Okay. So in give me some examples do you guys where did they listen and remember things or where did they did anybody pick up on somebody else's game move or you know what was the game or what was the funny what was the scene about any comments and anybody can chime in like what did you like about the scene and what did you notice i like raymond's twist on his words mm -hmm. oh i mean um no, so you, you that was covered. Right. Instead of pray, it was P R E Y. That was a good, fun little twist. Oh. <laughs> and, I, and I also thought pretty much the rest of the group uh, picked up on that and kept relating it back and forth. Whether it was the Doberman or um, or the Stalker, I mean, it, it all. Everybody kept that thread going, which I thought was really good. But added every everybody added a little twist to it as well. I like Raymond's accent. It was almost like a Boris Karloff. Um, <laughs> he was real creepy, wasn't he? Yes. <laughs> yeah, he was. I, I just was loved his facial expression, mm -hmm. Raymond's facial expression, just the whole time. And in my, I don't know if it's the same for you guys, but his face is kind of on the side of the camera over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so it's, it's sort of like he's like sneaky, yeah. like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> He's always sneaky, I know. <laughs> Teresa can vouch for that. Denise <laughs> added, uh, De Denise uh, kind of kept the game going of the stalker and the scariness. It kind of went back with her. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, and Liz talked about going, getting her neighbor and his ferocious dog. <laughs> oh, that was good. All right, good. Let's move on to the next group. Uh, so let's do uh, let's do um, Jason uh, and Barbara and Bill and Jack and Blue. And I don't really. I think five is good. So we'll stick with five. I might I might jump in your scene maybe, but I, I'd like to. Five is pretty good number. So um, don't for, don't forget to start the scene with you look or you seem. You look or you seem. And then the I, you can, you can, in, you you say I am whatever they say. So so you look mad. I am mad, right? Remember that one's a little bit different from you the other you I we that you always you never I need or I want. This is the other version, which is you look you seem I am that thing and you and you own it. Okay, 
Um, and then the suggestion, we need a new suggestion. Somebody type in a new, if you're not in the scene, type in a suggestion in the comments. If, you, if you're quick on the keyboard there, give me another, another noun. I like, I like the nouns. Those are quick and Jesse, easy. Jesse, can I jump in too if I wasn't in the last one? You, thank you. I, I knew I was forgetting something. I'm so sorry, Roy. Yes, you're uh -huh. the second person. I kept going, there's another person. Uh, that was you. I, I'm so sorry, Roy. No worries. Uh, I'm going to go with crutches. Crutches is the suggestion for you guys. Uh, so quick review. It's, it's Roy. Jason, Barbara, Bill, Jack, and Blue. Okay, so that should make our six. And um, and uh, let's start with Jack and Barbara in the scene. Jack and Barbara. Jack, you're going to be the you look, you seem. Barbara, you're going to say the I am, and then we'll get going. And your it's on couches. Is that what we're crutches? doing? Couches. Uh, cr crutches? Uh, cr crutches, as in like hurt your leg. Crutches. Oh. C r u t c h e s. Oh, you look excited, Barbara. I am really excited, Jack, because I am able to move with my crutch now much better than I ever had before. You know, I was having a hard time going up and down the stairs and in and out of the hallway, but now I've just got this down. Well, we need to get you ready for the marathon in a week. It's only been a week since you broke your leg, but no excuses. I'm hoping that surgery that you've started perfecting with all your other patients will help me get better soon. Not to worry. I have the best trainer for you. His name is Bill Dewey. He's, he's tested all, all, all the amazing comeback stories. Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, not, only, not only have we got amazing comeback stories, Jack, but, uh, but uh, we put 42 people into the uh, Paralympics, the Special Olympics, the Olympics, Olympics, and the Master Olympic Olympics. And boy, only 12 of them have died so far, but the others are doing pretty good. Yep. Yeah, Dr. Jason, Jason, you seem like you're so settled out there on the East Coast. It, it makes me very sad. Oh, Grandma Blue, yes, I am settled. But I miss my, my friends and family back West. I used to lean on them so much. <clears throat> lean on them like you need crutches these days? You're leaning that heavily? In many ways, they were a crutch for me. This, oh. weight, this weight upon my heart is just too heavy to bear anymore. Oh my, perhaps we should call in that, um, that coach that coaches people. Um, what was his name? Bill. I believe his name was Bill. Let's see what he can do with hearts. Infomercial. Let's, oh, yeah. let's go back to that. Let's go watch that infomercial again. I want to see what happens next. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. We've got, uh, we do hearts. We do hearts. We do, uh, we do lungs. We sometimes swap them because Ooh. we found that if we swap them, they actually get extra growth going and, uh, People sometimes grow a third leg, and, and that really helps in the sack race. That's uh, right, you know, Bill. Even, even, a, I, even I, a fourth I, leg as well. Barbara, go ahead. Well, Jack, I am so happy with this third leg that somehow got added on. It has increased my speed when I do the Olympics, and I owe it all to the surgery techniques that Bill has perfected. And I'm just so happy with what I've done. Right. I'd, I'd, like to get a, I'd like to get a testimonial from Roy. I believe that uh, Roy was uh, one of our first patients uh, about 14 days ago, and I think he's still doing well. Uh, we go to Roy. Uh, thank you, Coach Bill. I, just, I can't say enough about you. It's just unbelievable. I went to see you with only one leg. I walked out of the office with two legs, and weirdly, though, a diagnosis of COVID-19. I don't quite get that part, but I think you're trying to fit that in somewhere. Yes, yes, that was Crovid, by the way. Crow, Crow, not Core. Core, let's get this correct. Uh, that's that's in order to help you fly across the finish line. I should never doubt you, Coach Bill. You're just amazing. Coach Bill, Coach Bill, you seem so accomplished. Tell me, is this natural for a heart to beat this much? <laughs> Out of my shirt. <laughs> Seems a little excessive. What do you think? No, no, no. I think what you've got is a condition known as uh, 42D heart syndrome. 
<laughs> and it, it's actually it's actually quite good. It's actually quite good because it keeps all the blood from your brain, so your brain does right. not become over oxygenated. Oh, Mr. Bill, your point on actually it's double D, but forty two D, forty two double D, whichever. What's a what's now a D be between friends? It's Thank important you. to remember. It's important to remember as we go live with this with this new product that Bill's discovered that not all trials are successful, Barbara. There was a Jason Miser who's in Connecticut now who's mourning the loss of both his parents because the because of the excruciating uh, coaching of Bill Dewey. Yes, yes. Sometimes they uh, sometimes the stress is just too much, especially when they grow that uh, that uh, third leg uh, coming out of their nose. Exactly. Uh, and Bruce? Does that that condition that Blue had with the pounding heart does that occur in the men as well? And different positions and ways it's uh, a different yeah. organ yes typically it's a bit lower i i <laughs> think so. oh, oh you're naughty 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 it was the liver what, oh. what were you thinking never mind uh, blue i would love to see that heart palpitation one more time please my man. just diagnose it lightly for me please <laughs> <laughs> Oh That's my! Mean. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, you guys. That was really funny. Wow, that was so funny. Awesome. So uh, that was that was our uh, our quick night of improv. I hope wow. you enjoyed that. It, it, you know what? The more we do this, the better we get, and the more improv we do. I'm really proud of you guys. I actually am really proud because this was entertaining to watch. Would you guys agree? Anybody agree? Yeah. So um. So just a quick review, because, uh, you know, remember, I, I'm the book nerd trying to bring it back to what book we were trying nerd. to think about. So make assumptions. Don't ask a lot of questions in your scenes, okay? Number two, look for the game within your scene and play it. I thought we did. You guys did really well in that last one. Number three, listen and remember. Uh, that's not just for callbacks, although it helps with that. Um, uh, number three is listen and no, that's number four is listen for the whole idea in a statement. So really yeah. you know, listen for all those details and then avoid preconceived notions about what improv is, about what the scene is about, about what you're supposed to do or not do. You got to let go a little bit. Um, so cool. So uh, I next think we did one good thing is we all did listen well, which we don't always do in class. You know, but we did listen very well tonight, everybody. I agree. Um, we're gonna we're gonna focus for next week instead of two chapters at a time. That was too much for my brain. Yeah. So, so I'm gonna just do one. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> chapter six is moment to moment to moment. Life is what happens to you while you're busy making other plans. It was a John Lennon quote, but moment to moment to moment, chapter six. Uh, so we'll get into that next week. Um, you guys still like this? Is this still fun? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, cool. And are we still kind of learning? I know that's the dorky question, but are we still learning? It's not just pure, you know, randomness. You feel like... Well, yeah, you know, it is really different being on the Brady Bunch to do improv. You know, I mean, you have so much to add. You know, I mean, there's just so much going on. Like, you know? like bunnies. There's bunnies in one of the squares. Right, right. you know, and, um, you know, it's just like, you have to add that thing, like, are we in the same room or are we not? Yeah. You know. Yeah. I, I was actually talking to an improviser, a friend of mine, and he mentioned that just like we're slowing down our lives now by going to work and we're staying more at home, with improv, it's you're really focused on now with these Zoom improv about what the person's saying. It forces yeah. you to listen a little mm. bit better because you're not so worried about, oh, where's my body going to be or how am I going to enter the scene, you know? So mm. that's kind of a cool way to look at it. It is. The distractions are less so that we yeah. really are um, listening. I, I'm hoping that because of that, what Blue and Jack just said, when we come back, we'll be actually be better. <laughs> <laughs> Woo yeah, definitely. Um, We'll have learned a new skill, a new set of skills. So, okay, you guys. Jack, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna sign off for tonight. I appreciate you guys. I miss everybody, but this is this has been helping. 
Um, I, I am going to post these if you don't mind, because we had, I know there was um, somebody who couldn't get on tonight. Who was it that tried to email me? I, she, she just had an issue. Uh, let's see here. Who, somebody had an issue, because I remember. Oh, Parker, there's somebody behind you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Vic, Victoria. Mm -hmm. Victoria. So Victoria had some technical difficulties and couldn't get uh. on. Um, but hopefully we can get her next time. And um, if anybody else needs anything, just email me or, or call or text or whatever. Everybody stay safe, please. Stay safe. Stay safe. This Wear virus is kicking ass. And your gloves. Love you, everybody. Love, Love you. you, everybody. Love you. Bye. See you later. Right. Bye. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye, Bye. Bye Jason. Bye. Miss you. Bye. <laughs>